What's up Kai Soto fans? I'm back. This is the real Kai Soto fan channel. KSF. This is about all positive opinions, rumors, news about Kai Soto. Now, let's take a glimpse of Kai's private workout with Sacramento Kings. That's an easy piece of dunk. He's looking very good. That dude looks smaller than Kai. Probably 6'10 or 6'11 power forward or center position. Nice. He looks very healthy so far after his minor injury, I must say. And he appears to be more quicker and more refined looking. By the time that this video is released, there was already an updated video of Kai Soto working out in Sports Academy, still with Sacramento. It's a 30 minute video, so quite long to do commentaries, but feel free to check it out. Ah, those Euro steps looks awesome. He appears to move better than the other guy who seemed to be just 6'10 or 6'11 maybe. Now for his height as a 7'3 I must say that his movement is smooth as butter compared to the shorter guy. This is actually what I've been talking about. His skill is beyond the normal 7-3 basketball player. If we are talking about 6'10, 6'11, 7 feet, sure. But we are talking about 7, seven feet, 3 inches high, 20 year old kid that has enough professional basketball experience I would say. This is a proof that his work ethic is beyond belief. To think that he just got from an injury, right? It is just simply impressive. This fact is definitely underrated. Alright, let's move on now for our topic for today. Osmin Jen. So without further ado, let's get into it. Quite frankly, I think the ESPN's ranking is ridiculous. I know, right? <laughs> Do you even know this NBL player? His name is Ospin Jang, a 19-year-old French professional basketball player who last played for the New Zealand Breakers of the National Basketball League, the same league where Kai Soto plays. He stands 6 feet 10 inches tall, projected to be 6 feet 11 inches as he is still 9 years old, but plays as small forward, power forward. ESPN has been hyping this European player for quite some time now, and ESPN has been writing articles since June of 2021 about him and up until now actually continuously all over their site with their videos promoting him to be a, a prospect that is projected to be part of the lottery but of course other sports sites will definitely follow no doubt here in our video we won't talk about what ESPN and others are reporting about him because we will be talking about what they actually don't want you to see. Osmin Jang has always been having the privilege to, to be in their limelight. As a matter of fact, as I have said earlier, ESPNs never shy away on giving him the best publicity ever. In fact, during Mike Schmidt's 
interview about Osman Yang, his team is playing against Kai's team, the Adelaide 36ers. Now Kai's performance is nothing short of spectacular, hence he was interviewed during the app time. If you like, take your pick. Here's John Casey. Thanks, Wayne. I've got Kai Soto here with me at the moment. Congratulations. You've equaled your career high. That's a terrific first half. You must be pleased with the way you've been able to contribute. Yeah, I mean, just trying to be aggressive. I mean, this is our home court. We practice here every day, so we take pride on that. And uh, I just got to do it for the, for the team, for the fans, and for the history as well. And uh, my dad just arrived here, so I'm do, doing that for him too. Uh, yep, for the team, for the fans, for the history. So when he said for the history, he's talking about for the organization, the NBL itself. And uh, definitely for his dad. Right, uh, and that actually shows what personality Kai does have. His humility and a very appreciative person. He surely is an understatement. It's 14 there at quarter time, but they've closed this game. Kai's statement up about and his awareness of himself being in person who has the uh, courage to admit his room f for improvement is a very admirable act. And again, being the appreciative person within him by thanking his team as a whole is really something. Let's take a look at the game's highlight with Kai, of course. Can't knock it in from long range. Second game in a row, they're struggling from out there. But the effort, the energy on defense in that second quarter, and they're back in the game. It's been fantastic to watch Kai Soto grow before our eyes, hasn't it? Big time. I mean, this is a kid with the weight of a, of a, of a country on his shoulders with the, the attention and the, the uh, uh, following from the Philippines. He just carries himself really impressively. And as Case says in the interview, he's improving over the course of the season. And uh, you love the confidence. When you get it around the hoop, finish strong. Always trying to tuck it in when he's down low. Soto and steps out. Lux of fortune. Knocks one in off the glass. And uh, then was able to take that confidence into the block, wheeling and dealing over that left shoulder, righty hook, and now he's in double figures. Really nice first half from Kai Soto. Yeah, he mentioned that his father was in the house as well. Must be a great moment. He mentioned the whole country, the Philippines, watching on to see what kind of performance he puts together, but he has grown. Notice that the commentators are more than willing to share their positive thoughts about Kai simply in uh, carrying himself from the interview hearing Kai's answers echoing his positive outlook towards the uh, viewers is definitely something as well I mean who will not love this person I can say that he's not a kid anymore he's definitely a young man no doubt watching the video and if you are a fan of Kai Soto you will definitely feel of hearing the commentator's awesome analysis and acknowledgement about him. Not just being a hype, but the real deal if definitely will be given a chance. Now, let's take an in-depth look at the game where Osmin Diang and Kai was involved. Now, with that play, there is more to something there than appears to be at first, because uh, the player needs to have a high basketball IQ to space the floor and Kai knows where to go to hence the point guard was willing to pass the ball even if he was not looking. As you can see Kai is spacing the floor but for some reason he wasn't able to have any pass from his teammates even he appears to be open. That's also his difficulties that he has to deal with every game unfortunately. Now you will see here Kai's impact on the floor again. His 7'3 height is a gift because him being able to contest the shot and at the same time able to catch the rebound. Actually, during this game, Kai dominates the floor through his rebounds. And you will see Osman Dian here literally appears to be useless when up against Kai.
that's a good contest by Jang. However, his arrogance was not able to translate it into this game with Kai. Because one can say that he looks good like he was able to block the shot. However, it was still a foul and that made Kai drain the two shots letting him know that he had the last laugh. The shooting form is a takeaway that he will dominate the game someday because of the almost unblockable quick release from a 7-3 stretch five. That magnificent putback dunk made Osman Jang look so stupid for sure. You can see how he battles his opponent all the way through until he made the three point shot. They say he needs to improve his strength. Well, this young man shows his maturity in the court with his rivals, and for me, that's enough proof that he can do well in the NBA because NBL's more physical league arguably. And by the way, the three point shot made him the first tallest player to drain it in the NBL's history. Speaking of which, that was an awesome hook shot. Kai Soto's teammate made a gesture that means he was too small. Osman Jang shows his frustration because Kai was not allowing him to position himself. It shows his struggle in dealing with Kai. That hookshot certainly showcases his talent on being able to use the right and left hands equally well. He uses his left hand in shooting the ball and he uses well his right in doing some hook shots and driving in the lane for layups. They say that Kai's numbers appears to be not impressive, but if one will take the time to see all of his games, like one of his games with Osmin Yang, you will realize that there's a story behind these numbers. During the halftime, both of the team stats shows that New Zealand got a better points, actually 6 points ahead of the 36ers. If one will analyze it closely, it is the numbers of Kai that allows 36ers to tail the lead to just 6 points. 12 points of those field goals of Adelaide's is of Kai's. Obviously, the lone 3-point field goal of Kai is the 11.1% of 3-point average of the half and the chunk of the rebound average are most of Kai's as well. Looking at the shot chart, almost all of the spots where 36ers got their scores are Kai's field goals and that is clearly how you assess one's strength as well 
to make future plays to win games, but unfortunately their coach's priority is to make Kai's profile low as possible for him not to make or not to be in the NBA's radar. As you can see here, Kai Soto's points and rebounds are noticeable. You will see Dusty Hannes dimes as well. That is if only there are a couple, it will definitely convert it to points. However, since it appears that the team's priority is to not really make it to the playoffs, Adelaide 36ers seems to be more leaning into rebuilding the team and they seem to be fond of Kai on him playing one more season or perhaps stay in the NBL for good. But so far, it's looking that NBA teams are starting to like him more. Although the New Zealand Breakers got the win, comparing Osman Yang's stats of Kai will tell you that his 24 minutes, 13 points are actually not that significant because of simply him being a power forward due to his height 16 he only got four rebounds and he's part of the uh, starting five why do we need to be critical of Osman Jenks well it's only but fair if you to be an NBA player and if you will be defending side by side with a fellow forward player like 16 Kevin Dur Durant 611 Car Anthony Towns, 69 LeBron James, 611 Janice at Into Compo, and you're a starter and you play 20.3 minutes per game and and you're a starter but you can only contribute 8.9 points, 3.2 rebounds, and just merely 0 0.3 block per game with only 27% three-point average then why is he even part of the ESPN Lotters pick to begin with? Looking at how the New Zealand Breakers was performing their standings in the league shows they're at the very bottom. One should be diligently examining a player's impact to the team. Now if we to compare Kai's impact to the team, Adelaide is in 7th standing and Adelaide is not prioritizing the uh, team to be in the playoffs they appears to be rebuilding as well like with other teams they have fairly new coach but still on a respectable seven overall standing was able to beat the uh, top seeded team and NBL ar arguably is the most physical basketball organization in the world now you do your math all right you can see he is top eight in points he is top five in rebounds he is top two in field goals and his top one in blocks. Now the answer to such a question as to does Deng deserve the spot or Kai should really be an undrafted player lies at the heart of the fans of Kai Soto like us who really know what is going on but one NBA team that really knows how to dig a treasure that knows how to value a precious gem, that truly knows how to seek a unicorn is the one that can honestly respond to it through this coming NBA draft and throughout Kai's journey alongside with them. All I can say and I believe everyone will agree that anything is possible, we are placing our bet that he will be drafted in the first round. Thanks again for giving your time to listen and show your presence to my previous video. I hope you like this one as well. Leave a comment and let me know your thoughts below. If you like it, just click the like button and the notification bell for new video updates. Peace out.